opening and welcome to our service where we celebrate Epiphany, the visit of the Magi to the Christ child, where the Magi acknowledge Christ as the Son of God. Shall we bow our heads together in collective prayer as we pray the prayer for Epiphany? O oh God, who by the leading of a star manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth, mercifully grant that we who know you now by faith may at last behold your glory face to face through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the, Holy, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. as we confess before the Lord and as we bring our own confession before the Lord and lay it at the foot of the cross, may we receive God's forgiveness. For God, who is both power and love, forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. Well, Happy New Year. Let's, um, you faithful people, let's worship our faithful God. Oh, come, all you faithful. Oh, come, all you faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come. Oh, God. 
city we worship we worship you Jesus King of Kings and Lord of Lords and name above all names and now we're going to have our Old Testament reading from Isaiah this is Isaiah chapter 60 verses 1 to 6 Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and come about you, all assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters are carried on the hip. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will cover your land. Young camels of Midian and Ephah and all from Sheba will come bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we're going to have our New Testament reading. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay his homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, who inquired them where the Messiah was to be born, they told him, In Bethlehem of Judea. For so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judea, Judea, for from you shall come a ruler, who is to, who is to shepherd my people from Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned for, for them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, 
and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him. Homage. A after they had heard the king, th they, they set out, and there ahead of them went a star that they had seen it and its rising, until it stopped over the place where Jesus was. After they saw th that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. O on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid, and paid him his homage. Then, opening the treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh, and having been warmed in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One of the most frequent questions that I've been asked since I arrived to live in Stoke a few months ago is, have you got lost yet? It seems that the roundabouts and road layout and road signs or lack of them are legendary. Have I got lost yet? Let's just say I've made a few interesting scenic detours. There are so many options and it's not always clear where they will, they will lead. Suddenly there seem to be three roundabouts on top of each other and the road signs aren't always ha that helpful if you don't know which place is next to another. I've learned that if you're not concentrating well, the flow of traffic will funnel you in a direction you suddenly realise you don't want to go, but it's too late. Then my sat-nav has to frequently do some frantic rerouting. I wonder if life sometimes feels like that for us, as we make decisions and navigate the complex world we live in. There are so many choices and options, from the small things about what we buy in supermarkets to bigger priorities like how we use our money or really big things like life decisions, how we respond to people we meet each day, how we prioritise our time, what we do with relationships. We live in a consumer society that tells us that choice is good and yet there's plenty of research that shows that having lots of choice can actually be overwhelming. Then, of course, things happen that we don't have a choice about and we're left feeling disempowered. We only need to look at the effects of COVID on all our lives to realise that one. Or we make a choice and we discover it doesn't lead where we hoped it would. Or we find ourselves funnelled in a direction of life by the flow of circumstances around us and before we know it, we're no longer heading where we hoped for. The start of a new year is often a time when we look forward to the year ahead, maybe in anticipation, maybe actually in trepidation. I wonder what's going to shape the direction of your life this year and how you navigate it. You may already have hopes and expectations. You may well have worries about what will happen that is beyond your control. In our Gospel reading this morning, we read the story of the Magi, or wise men. I'm sure it's something you've heard uh, lots before. And most often we come across the story of the wise men in nativity scenes, where they come and meet the infant Jesus with their gold, frankincense and myrrh. It's one of the best parts in the school nativity play, isn't it? Getting to dress up in colourful clothes and walk around looking important. It must have been an amazing experience for them. But I wonder whether the really good news in that story for us comes from how they got there. Firstly, the wise men weren't even starting in the right place to meet Jesus. They were probably at least 400 miles away and there wasn't a direct route across the desert. Transport was on foot with camels. And yet it's as if God has the zoomed out view on the sat-nav map which includes where they are and where they need to be. And he could easily do the routing between them, even though it wasn't straightforward. Then God managed to get the message through to them. There was no internet, radio or TV, or even old fashioned phone landlines. They were in the wrong place to even hear the news that the Messiah had been born. Yet what happens? They were probably people whose jobs included studying the stars. So God used something that was a bit unusual, 
but part of their everyday lives to gain their attention. Then they were curious enough to explore what this might mean. They were then taken on a, had to make a long and difficult journey, traveling through a desert, no roads or certainly not well-made roads, definitely no premier inns or Airbnbs or supermarkets, and it probably wasn't that safe either. And yet they still ended up in the right place at the right time. Possibly the fact that they had had to make a difficult journey will have saved them from Herod being, enable, being able to enact revenge when he was furious that they didn't do what he asked. They hadn't allowed themselves to get funneled into his plan. And then, of course, we read in the story that they had to reroute. The wise men had heard God's direction, knowing what the star meant, but they'd made the assumption that that meant they needed to go and see Jesus in a palace in Jerusalem. They took a wrong turn, but that didn't mean hope of getting to the destination was lost. They just needed to reroute back to Bethlehem and God put people there who helped them to do that. So many challenges, so much that could have gone in other directions, so much that didn't seem particularly possible Yet the lives of the, the wise men follow a journey which is both amazing for them and has a key part to play in God revealing Jesus as King of Kings, the Saviour of the world. Whatever the starting point of our lives this year, whether we feel that we're in the right place or the wrong place for the year to be a journey full of hope and God's purpose in our lives, God has the whole zoomed out map and can root us where he wants us to be. Unless you're an astronomer, God is unlikely to lead you through a star in the sky. But he is likely to lead us if we are curious about what is happening in our everyday lives, if we expect that he will be directing and leading us. We just need to slow down enough to notice and explore, open to the possibility that just one of those things that happens may or may not be a signpost from God. If you're like me, you would like God to show you the entire map now and preferably somehow teleport you from where you are now to where you are leading, where he's leading you to without having to do the journey in between. And if the journey is tough, we can question sometimes, can't we, whether God is leading us in the right direction or not but we see in the story of the wise men that the journey can take some time and is not always easy. And if we think we know where God is leading us and then that doesn't seem to work out, God is always willing to help us reroute, to use our detours to get us back on track. So whoever we are, wherever we are, we're almost certainly going to have to navigate lots of twists, turns and choices throughout life this year. Just imagine what might happen for us and through us for others if, like the wise men so long ago, we let God direct us as we do that. And shall we pray? Let's pray together. Uh, Father God, we do praise you, Lord, and we love you so much, Father. Um, Lord, uh, first I want to start, Lord, by praying and giving thanks, Lord, for um, our three churches in this parish, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for um, St. Stephen's on Bentley, for St. Mary's in Butnell and St. John's down here in Abbeyalton. Lord, thank you, Father, for the opportunities we had over Christmas. Even though it's been difficult, it's not been normal, Father, um, we still had chances to to reach out and to speak to people, um, children in our schools, um, our communities. Lord, thank you for those opportunities that we had. Um, Father, we want to continue also, Lord, to pray for those who are sick at this time. Father, whether it's through physical illness, through um, people who are struggling with their mental health, through depression and anxiety. We want to think about those who are, who are not well at the moment, those who are ill, um, those who are struggling with COVID, Father. We, we pray, Lord, for healing, Lord. Please, Father, we pray, just 
bring healing, Lord. For those people who are struggling with anxiety and depression, Lord, we pray for them as well. Lord, give them some relief, we pray. Lord, um, come and minister to them, Lord. Thank you, Father. Lord, we want to pray for those people who are anxious about um, their security. Maybe they've lost a job or they're worried about their future at work. Lord, we be with them as well, Father. And Lord, will you help us, Lord, as communities, Father, to to pull around and help to support those who um, are struggling at this time. Um, please, Lord, help us to provide for those who haven't got. Um, please, Father, we, we pray for that. Lord, we also, Father, want to um, pray for those people who are working on our front lines, those doctors and nurses and our care staff in the hospitals and care homes, Lord, the people who um, travel from house to house providing care. Lord, be with them, Lord, we pray. Protect them, Father. And Lord, when they start to just get down and feel like everything's a bit too much for them, Lord, will you give them the strength? Lord, carry them, Lord, we pray. And we just thank you for them, Father. Lord, we also want to, um, we pray Lord, that you help us as church. You help us as the body of Christ, Lord, to to be a presence in this really difficult time. Um, Lord, you've given us what we need and we've worked hard, Father, through you, Lord, to, to bring hope and light into this really dark time. Lord, help us to continue in that work, I pray, Father. Um, Lord, just be with us. Give us new ways, Lord, to move forward in our mission and uh, in taking and sharing the good news out and to our communities. Father, I pray that mission doesn't just come to a standstill. Lord, the good news is still good news. We've just celebrated the coming of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, to be carriers of that good news. Please, Lord, I pray. We pray. And Father, we just pray, Father, um, that more people come to know you and more people can experience the peace um, that you offer, Father. So please, Lord, we pray, just make that a reality in this parish. Help us, Lord, to be people who turn to you um, in all areas of our life, Lord, and rely on you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And let's say the words of the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen and God bless.
all there's left to do is bring for you the blessing. And so may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and truth of the God who loves you and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. So let's go in love and joy and peace to serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Oh, yeah.